Now at 5 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, he was on the run for less than a day and authorities say his mother helped him escape prison. And the four industrial ISD baseball players accused of assaulting another player are scheduled for court tomorrow morning. Plus, those helping Toys for Tots were busy today with another distribution to all the good boys and girls. Well, we have a live picture here showing how nice a day it was. Plenty of sunshine, however, clouds are coming in. And this coming weekend, which is, of course, Christmas, it looks a little damp. We'll be talking about that coming up in just a few minutes. The deadline to register to vote in the mayoral special election in Victoria is just days away. You're watching 25 News Now at 5. Good afternoon and thanks for being with us. I'm Karina Garcia. The long arm of the law caught up with Robert Yancey Jr., who escaped from the Clemens unit in Brazura. He was on the run for less than 17 hours. The 39-year-old is serving a life sentence without parole for sexually abusing a child in Victoria County. Matagorda County was caught up to him this morning just after 8 o'clock. Matagorda County is about 45 miles southwest of Brazura County. The Clemens unit in Brazura County is about 60 miles south of Houston. He now faces felony escape charges. Now, Authorities also arrested Yancey's mother, Lenore Prestil. She's accused of helping him escape. Victoria police tracked down a white Nissan Versa used in the escape. It was spotted in Victoria around 6.09 p.m. Sunday. Victoria is about 110 miles west of Brazura. Now, Prestil was up on a, or rather was arrested on an outstanding warrant connected to Yancey's escape. And finally, Russell Williams is charged with helping him escape. He's charged with criminal intent to escape, and he's currently at the Victoria County Jail without bond. Now, the four former industrial ISD baseball players are expected in court tomorrow. That's going to be Tuesday, December 19th. Colin Stumpfel, Zachary Kutchler, Christopher McRoy, and Braxton Warren all indicted on charges of organized criminal assault. They're accused of assaulting a young player following a baseball game that happened on January or rather April 27th. That hearing is set for 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Now, there's been a major shift in the Vatican. Pope Francis formally permitted Roman Catholic priests to bless same-sex couples Monday. The blessings may be carried out as long as they are not part of a regular church ritual. They must also not take place at the same time as a civil union. The current justices of the Supreme Court today honored the life and work of the late Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, who is now lying in repose at the court. O'Connor's casket was carried into the building by Supreme Court police officers. Members of O'Connor's family and all nine current justices were among the initial mourning of the life of the first woman to hold a seat on the United States Supreme Court. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin in Israel Monday. The visit comes as Washington pushes Israel on civilian casualties in Gaza, even as it provides military and diplomatic support. He is expected to discuss with Israeli leaders the next steps in the conflict. Now, Secretary Austin also plans to visit Qatar while in the region. I discussed pathways today toward a future for Gaza after Hamas based upon the clear principles laid down last month by my friend, Secretary Blinken. Israelis and Palestinians both deserve a horizon of hope. So the United States continues to believe, as we have under administrations of both parties, that it is in the interest of both Israelis and Palestinians to move forward toward two states, living side by side in mutual security. A senior defense official at the Pentagon says since the October 7th attack on Israel by Hamas, Qatar has played a critical role in helping the U.S. communicate with Hamas. Secretary Austin visited the region where he met with the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command. Now, police in White Settlement, Texas, say the discovery of a hit and runs victim's body inside a passed out driver's vehicle is a reminder not to drive while impaired. Police in White Settlement say they believe the vehicle hit the victim 40 miles away in Dallas Saturday night. They think the impact was so powerful it threw the body into the vehicle. The driver is identified as 31 year old Nestor Flores of Arlington. The department says he claims he thought he hit a deer despite the human body that ended up right next to him. A welfare check is what led police to the discovery in a restaurant parking lot. 
The deadline to register to vote in the upcoming mayoral special election is Thursday, January 4th. Six people are running for the seat. That includes Peter Brown, Bob Constantine, Duane Crocker, Jacob Salceda, Josephine Solis, and Carissa Winters on the ballot. Election day is scheduled for Saturday, February 3rd. Now, if you plan to travel by air or on the road, leave early and pack some extra patience. This is a look at George Bush Intercontinental Airport today. The airport is expecting record breaking travel crowds this week. It's the same story for road travel this holiday season. U.S. airlines are prepared to fly 2.8 million passengers a day over long the Christmas holiday. The three biggest legacy airlines in the United States say they are gearing up for a longer and larger stretch of Christmas holiday travel while aiming for a repeat of this past Thanksgiving, which saw few flight cancellations. And now let's take a look at your forecast with Chief Meteorologist Mac Bettis. Thank you, Karina. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the brilliant sunshine that we had over the weekend. And of course, today uh, it's looking good for the short term. But you know what? In the long term, which is by the end of this week, things are going to be different. You see the clouds already streaming this way. That's high cloud cover. The main event is this storm off the coast of California. Yes, that's coming to visit. We'll be talking more about it. Tell you when it gets here coming up in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. Mac, thank you. The Food Bank of the Golden Crescent was busy today distributing food to families in need. The Food Bank works with people to make the process as easy as possible. Today, they held a drive through pickup at the Victoria Community Center with a Christmas week away. The demand is great. We brought for about 310 families. I say we're about 290 right now. Um, things are tough, but people are still coming through. The food bank has driven up food distributions once a month at the community center. And of course, giving is just part of the Christmas spirit. Today, a school in Port Lavaca gifted fully decorated Christmas trees. The fourth grade student council at HJM Elementary came up with the idea. The school leaders decided on the theme for each tree and then the rest of the students take it from there. We've had generous uh, community donors that donated these trees and each grade level decorates a tree according to a theme that the student council has chosen and then we donate them back into our school community. This is the seventh year HJM Elementary School has taken place and part of the tree donation program. In that time, they've donated around 50 fully decorated Christmas trees to area residents. The 33rd annual holiday dinner by HEB called the Feast of Sharing is this Wednesday from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Victoria Community Center. That's 2805 East North Street. A free shuttle will take people from Faith Family Church at 2002 East Mockingbird Lane to this community center. Those rides start at 3 p.m. Now the Feast of Sharing started in 1989 and served about 340,000 meals in 34 Texas cities. So here is your beer poll. You can scan that QR code on your screen to vote. The question is, are you participating in this year's Feast of Sharing? Your options are yes, no, or volunteering. We want to hear from you. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part. And of course, we're going to have an update on 25 News Now at 6. Now, thanks to the annual Toys for Tots drive, many Crossroads children will have a very Merry Christmas. The toys were distributed at the Victoria Community Center and families had to register ahead of time to receive the toys. The red bags are filled with toys and organizers say this year was pretty busy. The traffic has been good this morning. We had a line waiting out there for us, but we got them all taken care of as fast as we could. Um, then we get more people coming through, so it's staying steady right now. We're able to take care of everybody. The Marine Corps Reserve Toys for Tots campaign helps thousands of children across the country. The Salvation Army of Victoria is falling behind its goal for those red kettles and they need your help. The goal is to raise $100,000. Right now, they need $35,000 more to reach this goal. You can find the red kettles outside stores all the way through Christmas Eve. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click that notification bell. For now, stay with us. President Joe Biden taking time to remember loved ones lost 51 years ago today. That's straight ahead on 25 News Now at 5. Also ahead, it could be a new era for treatments for genetic conditions with new therapies for sickle cell disease.
My favorite holiday song is Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell. <laughs> One, two, three. Feliz Navidad. Bum, 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 bum. Santa baby, come put a sable under the tree for me. Oh yeah, last Christmas yeah. I gave you <laughs> And so I was singing, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Masters in this hall? Masters in this hall, hear me today. Mm. Something, something, something. I think I'm gonna have to go with Silent Night, honestly. That's a classic. Silent Night. Always cry. Holy oh, Night. Yeah. That's too good. Because my favorite Christmas song is the one where it's like, chestnuts roasting by an open fire. But the one with Justin Bieber. From all of us here at 25 News Now, Happy, Happy Holidays! holidays. The Biden family attended church in Delaware today on the anniversary of the deaths of President Biden's first wife and one-year-old daughter. Neela and Naomi Biden were killed in a car crash in 1972, just days before Biden was sworn into office as a senator. President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden, Hunter Biden and his family, and the rest of the couple's daughter, Ashley, spent about 45 minutes outside, or rather inside, St. Joseph on the Brandywine Roman Catholic Church. Today marks the 51 anniversary anniversary of their deaths. Now, it could be a new era of treatments for genetic conditions. The FDA recently approved new therapies for sickle cell disease. It's been a long time coming. Newly FDA approved therapies for sickle cell disease are shining a light of hope on a long neglected illness. This is a huge thing. It's Dr. Beth Stanger with Children's Healthcare of Atlanta treats pediatric patients with sickle cell disease. The illness is a group of inherited red blood cell disorders, which causes the red blood cells to become hard and sticky and crescent in shape. Which then blocks um, blood vessels, um, particularly very small blood vessels all through the body, um, leading to painful episodes and, and organ damage over the lifetime of an individual with sickle cell disease. Up until now, the only cure for the disease has been a bone marrow or stem cell transplant, but it can be risky and doesn't always work. The new therapies take away the need for a donor. Cass Jevy uses a technique to alter a patient's stem cells, while Lifgenia is a cell-based gene therapy using a gene delivery vehicle for genetic modification. Both of the clinical trials that um, led to, to these two products FDA approval showed 
um, dramatic decrease in the number of painful episodes that these patients are having. The new treatments won't make sickle cell go away. The hefty price tag and extensive hospital stay may not allow access to all. I think as with any kind of new and expensive thing in medicine, um, they do get cheaper and better over time. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. It's bald eagle nesting season in Texas. Guess how big this nest is? The Texas Parks and Wildlife has the answers, and we retweeted their story from our Twitter page, Crossroads Today. So go ahead and check that out so you can see that bald eagle's nest. And good afternoon, everybody. Uh, certainly another gorgeous day. Well, what a weekend, right? I mean, the rain Friday wasn't as big as expected, but that's okay. We did get a few sprinkles here and there. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, terrific. Tuesday, Wednesday, not bad, but Things start changing on us. Right now we're at 71 degrees. Our high today got up to 76. We're gonna be above normal for most of this week, even though we were expecting rain. We'll be talking more about that coming up in just a moment. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Temperatures are fairly mild for this time of year. It's December. It's almost the beginning of winter, and we're looking at uh, 70 degrees pretty much around the area. Everybody, uh, except for along the coast, 68 down in Sea Drift, 71 for us, 68 out in Nixon, and 70 up in Gonzales. Uh, the winds are not a factor as of today. They're a little bit out of the northeast, as you see right there. We actually had a dry line that came through. It was not a big thing, but that's why we've got a northeast wind right now and it's fairly light. Lots of sunshine today, that's for sure. We, uh, I mean, it was really nice out there. I hope you had a chance to enjoy it. While we see clouds moving toward us, these are high level clouds. It's not a, a big concern, but you will see more and more cloud cover over the next couple of days. But yet the whole week is going to be in the mid 70s. OK, this is part of what I predicted earlier and said, no ice and snow, no freezes un until after Christmas, and, and that's what's happening. 
Why? Well, we've got two storms that are buffeting the country right now. This one is in the northeast, bringing snow to the Ohio Valley. We're in the good side of the ridge, giving us the clear skies. But this uh, California storm is going to be moving toward us. And that is going to be our rainmaker as we get closer uh, to the weekend. For us, temperatures, look at that, 70. We're the warmest spot in the country, actually. Uh, 76 this afternoon. You can see, uh, for those of you traveling, a uh, holiday season, uh, yeah, it's cold below freezing throughout the Midwest, Ohio Valley, mid Mississippi, and all the Northwest, except for maybe, you know, Arizona and Texas. We're, we're doing the warm stuff. So here's what's happening over the next few days. High pressure is good. High pressure will be good through Tuesday and Wednesday. But by the time we get to late Wednesday and into Thursday, we start seeing that sea breeze come in with the humidity. We'll have more clouds and a few sprinkles. This is fairly light stuff. But then Friday, we start watching to the west because on Saturday, we're going to have shower activity approaching us from the west. And this storm will be here probably on Monday, which is Christmas Day. You'll be inside playing with the toys. I know, I know, that's okay. Anyway, but we do have a shot at getting some rain. Only thing I'm concerned with, because it is winter, is folks driving around, and we know that a lot of people will be driving. So I just want you to keep a heads up on that, uh, which is coming up for the weekend. So it'll be a little damp for most of the weekend. 52 tonight, over, uh, overnight in uh, Port Lavaca, getting up to 67 tomorrow. We'll see a little bit more cloud cover tomorrow. And in Cuero, we get down to 47 and up to 68. A little bit more cloud cover, but still not a bad looking day. And then here's a seven day. All right, we start off uh, partly cloudy, almost 70 tomorrow. Then 73 on Wednesday, 71 with a drizzle maybe early in the morning on Thursday. Friday, we start watching the west. We got a 30, 40, 40, 30 percent chance of light rain activity. Now, these are not thunderstorms. This is that light, uh, even winter rain. And so we're going to watch for that. So I'm calling it mild and damp. And then the front comes through on Monday with a little bit better shot at rain. And by then, you will have opened all of your gifts under the tree. That's your uh, seven day forecast, reminding everybody we do have a QR code. We'd love for you to scan that. Put Crossroads today on your phone. Cut it out. Thank you, Mac. Coming up next on 25 News Now 05, we'll take a look at your stocks. Plus, the federal government takes action against Southwest Airlines for their holiday meltdown last year.
Taking a look at your stocks, the Dow up 21 points, the S&P 500 up 28 points, and the Nasdaq up 113 points. Oil up $1.04, closing at $72.47 a barrel. Nippon Steel, Japan's largest steelmaker, has agreed to buy U.S. steel for $14 billion. U.S. Steel was once the world's largest corporation and symbol of American industrial might. But these days, U.S. Steel isn't even the largest American steelmaker. This new deal is the latest step and the gradual decline of the iconic 122-year-old company. The agreement would allow U.S. Steel to retain its name and keep its headquarters in Pittsburgh. This agreement, though, could face some opposition. The federal government hit Southwest Airlines with a $140 million fine for last year's holiday meltdown. The 10-day-long fiasco led to the cancellation of almost 17,000 flights and stranded more than 2 million travelers. The Department of Transportation says Southwest violated several consumer protection laws, including not communicating with passengers, failing to provide adequate customer service, and not refunding passengers fast enough. Stay with us. We're going to take one last look at your forecast with Mac. Plus, have your toothbrush and floss handy because tomorrow is National Hard Candy Day. Plus, here's a look at World News Tonight right after 25 News Now at 5. This week, the Senate delays holiday recess. If there's a breakthrough, will the Republican-controlled House come back to vote? Plus, the holiday week weather. More Americans turn to the most-watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. All right, you guys, Tuesday is hard candy day. No. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> this puts things into perspective. I mean, I think it's common sense, but most hard candies are about 100% sugar, yeah. boiled and placed into molds, but some were once used for medicinal purposes. Doctors used to prescribe hard candies made with lemon or peppermint to help with stomach issues like indigestion. And yeah. even today, we use lollipops or cough drops to cure sore throats. And what's even better about hard candy is that it lasts for a while.
It's hard to, you know, get down, especially with a lollipop or candy cane without savoring it first fully. <laughs> you know what? I'm not really a big fan of hard candy well, like that, but I, I could mess up a good butterscotch. Well, okay, you know? that's good. That's yeah. a good step. I'm just so happy that now they have the cough drops that are sugar free. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, at our age, you know, get to watch our diets, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's common sense, right? But it's crazy that it's just, at the end of the day, it's just it's sugar just boiled, boiled down. Sugar. And it's put into a form, they give it a little flavor and color, mm, and that's it. That really but gets they me were thinking. wonderful mm -hmm. when we were kids. Oh, yeah. That's why we had all those cavities and okay. dentist appointments back in the day. I always thought they were in cahoots, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the candy <laughs> and the dentist. Yeah. Anyway, maybe not. I was just kidding. I just kidding. Don't get mad. I have a really nice <laughs> dentist here. Anyway, uh, here's our <laughs> forecast. Tomorrow, still a pretty good looking day, but a little bit more cloud cover. By Wednesday, we start picking up cloud cover. And then a uh, little light rain or drizzle. Uh, this Thursday, Friday. Saturday looks a little damp right now, and that is Christmas weekend. Uh, Christmas Day is Monday, and we have a frontal system coming through. Uh, but uh, I don't expect any of this to be, you know, major hard flooding rain. It's kind of like what we had last Friday, which is kind of a light to moderate sort of drizzle mist, and then it moves out of the area. But for one thing's for sure, we are going to be probably the warmest temperatures in the country right on through Saturday and Sunday. So uh, enjoy that. That's right. Thank you, Mac. And thank you for being with us. We hope to see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 6. World News Tonight with David Muir is up next.